Four Horsemen asks, uh, how might Kyle Hamilton be used differently under Marcus Freeman than under Clark Lee? This is a, a great question. And, and the answer is, uh, I don't know, but I'm going to explain to you some ways that he could be used that and why I'm uncertain of it. So number one, Kyle Hamilton is, is a unique player in that he could do so many different things at a high level. If, if they just want to have him, have him play straight free safety, middle of the field, cover one guy, he would be brilliant at it. He's so rangy. We saw that against Alabama. He'd get his hands on a lot of throws. He'd influence a lot of throws, meaning quarterbacks don't make throws because they're worried about him. If they wanted to turn him into a pure cover four alley safety, he would be great at that because he can tackle. He's instinctive. He gets downhill in a hurry. Um, he's a physical kid, even though he's on the skinny side. He's always been a big hitter from the moment he, he showed up on campus, and he's only going to get stronger. And he's a guy that I think if you moved him to Rover, would be an elite Rover. I think if you moved him to Rover, he would replicate Jeremiah Wusu's stats. I, I truly believe that. I think Kyle Hamilton's one of those guys that could do whatever the heck you want him to do. And if Notre Dame decided they wanted to to put him at Rover in a, th in a true 3-3-5, three, three, I think he'd be brilliant at it. I think he'd be a game changer at it. I think he'd have 75 tackles, probably 13 tackles for loss, and four or five sacks. I really think Kyle Hamilton would be that good at it because he's a pretty good blitzer, even as a safety. The, the concern here is not about what he can or can't do. The question is, is how does the rest of the defense shape, shape out? The issue with, with moving Kyle Hamilton to, to, let's say, like a rover position or, or more of a closer to the line of scrimmage player is, there's bigger question marks about what then would be behind him. Safety is literally your last line of defense. And, and if you're not confident in the players behind him, then it kind of limits what you can do with him. So, you know, let's say, let's say that, that say one of the younger, say, let's say Litchfield Ajavon or KJ Wallace or, or, or Justin Walters, one of those younger players or two of them just had big time breakouts this spring. Like, wow, this kid can flat out play. These guys got to get on the field. Houston Griffith is everything that I think he is, and he's ready to be a breakout player. Then I think there's some things you could do with Kyle Hamilton in a three safety defense where he could be that guy that you just move all over and you do a lot of different things with. He plays some rover. He plays almost like a hybrid linebacker. You have enough athleticism, a linebacker, to bump some guys out and kind of invert them a little bit and get real creative with how you view Kyle Hamilton. And the, the, the benefit to that is – He's your best player in 2022, excuse me, 2021. And there's no doubt about it, in my opinion. He's your best defensive player by a, by far. And that's that's just how good he is, not that they don't have other excellent players. So then what is going to happen is teams are then going to game plan to avoid him. Well, last year that was really hard to do because you also had to game plan to avoid Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, and they were often not on the same side of the field. So it was very hard to avoid Kyle Hamilton and Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. Well, I don't know if there's that second player yet. Now, maybe Shane Simon becomes that, which we talked about. Maybe Isaiah Foskey becomes that. Maybe one of the safeties we talked about has a breakout and becomes that kind of guy. But right now, that guy doesn't exist. So one of the things you can do as a defensive coordinator to counter that is to move him around more. So one snap, he's to the field. He's down down you know, down in the alley, maybe he's over a slot. The next play, maybe you drop him in the middle of the field. The next play, maybe you have him in the boundary. You can kind of turn him into sort of that really versatile player where as an offense, you have no clue where he's going to line up. And I can bring him on pressures and blitzes and play him in coverage from all over the field. So I think it gives you a lot of flexibility with that should he be able to do that. But you can't do that without the players behind him being really good. Right now, it's a very unproven position. So I think it limits what you can do with him. You almost have to keep him on the back end as much as possible because of the fact that you just don't have great options besides him. So I think it, it limits them. Now, depending on how we see things shake out in the spring, could change that. They might be more versatile to, with him. But as of right now, I, I don't know how much – versatility they're going to be able to do with him based on the things we talked about because of those question marks at other positions. So I hope, I hope that we see him, other guys break out. Kyle Hamilton is able to do move all over because Houston Griffith steps up or KJ Wallace or Litchfield Ajavon or DJ Brown or Justin Walters, maybe Kerry G comes in the fall, does a great job. He's ready to play. Maybe Philip Riley is just so good 
that he's ready to go make, play safety. Who, who knows? There's a, there's options there, but until those guys break out, you can't. You have to be real careful about how how much three safety looks you want to do, and then that also then limits how much you can move Kyle Hamilton. Because if you have to go to a four two five with a with more of a rover, and you've only got two safeties on the field, it's going to really limit your ability to just really use him all over and be different with him, which was to your point. 